Backstage Knitting Podcast. Backstage Knitting Podcast. Backstage Knitting Podcast. Backstage Knitting Podcast. Grab your knitting nanny cup of tea. Beth and Anna, what more could you need? It's the Backstage Knitting Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Backstage Knitting Podcast. I'm Bethany, and I'm your host. I want to thank all new listeners and viewers for joining us, and all returning new and new, bleh, returning viewers and listeners for joining me today. I really appreciate it. This is episode 44 on Thursday, August 16th, 2018. Uh, well, let's just jump right in. We don't have any shout outs today, but if you would like a shout out, if you go into the Backstage Knitting Ravelry group, join the group. There is a getting to know you thread in the Ravelry group and introduce yourself. Let me know who you are, where you're from, what you're working on, you know, things like that. I really like to hear from everybody. It's it's fun for me and, you know, I like making friends. Um, if you want to find me out in the social media internet universe, you can do so by liking, friending, following, whatever, Backstage Knitting Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. You can find the show notes where I will link to everything I talk about today at BackstageKnitting.com. You can email me with questions, comments, concerns at BackstageKnitting at gmail.com. And again, please join our Ravelry group. It's a lot of fun and I like talking to people. So there you go. You can also subscribe to the audio version of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your audio podcast, and you can subscribe to the video version of this show on YouTube. Okay, well let's see. Let's jump in with On the Needles. So I currently, this morning, right before we I started recording, I blocked the body part of my Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry, and I'm doing that in a bunch of different colors in the Sublime DK base from Black Trillium Fibers. And so I last, last time we talked, I had uh, ripped out the collar portion of the sweater. And yeah, because it just, it was really pulling up on the corners there and I didn't care for that much. It just didn't didn't work well. So I'm blocking the body por portion of the sweater and once that is all dry, I will pick up the stitches again, do the collar again, and hopefully that will work out a whole lot better. I'm really looking forward to wearing it. It's starting to cool down a little bit around here unfortunately I think that is because of the smoke there have been a lot of wildfires going on in the area and so the air quality in Seattle right now is really really bad and I know a lot of people are struggling with their allergies and stuff so that is the downside to uh, the cooler weather we're having but at the same time it is still nice that it's not not so hot that I can't work on the sweater on my lap or, you know, think about think about what other sweaters I will be wearing when it is legitimately cool outside. So that's exciting. Hopefully that will get done soon. I have also been working on my Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. And this is in a uh, knitted wit in their Victory Sock Base in their Badger Buddy colorway. So this is yellow and black stripes with a little bit of gray that kind of fades in and out as it works into the black. I'm really enjoying the way that this is knitting up. I'm still working on the uh, ribbing for the brim. I think I'm about two inches in, so I'm gonna do about two inches more before I move on to the stockinette body of the hat. 
Uh, I'm gonna make it a little shorter than I've made some of my other sock head hats just because with my hair being so short, I feel like if it's too big, it really kind of takes over my whole head. Um, yeah, so, but I, I really, I, cause I made the sock head slouch hat in the Gryffindor colorway and the Slytherin colorway. So I'm enjoying seeing the different ways that the, the yarn is striping up, that it's a little, each one has been a little different as far as how thick the stripes are. And that's been a lot of, a lot of fun to see. Um, let's see. I have also been working on two different pairs of Port Gamble socks. Uh, the first one, um, and this is the Port Gamble sock pattern by Fairlight Fibers, and it has, it is a cuff down, like shorty sock, but it's got a squishy garter stitch heel flap thing that has been fun to to work on it's squishy I'm very excited to wear them so the first pair I finished turning the heel and I'm working on the foot is in uh, Mondim color 201 and that's a hundred percent non super wash Portuguese wool and those are in pinks and reds and whites and I think a little bit of purple and that's been a lot of fun to watch those stripe up and then I did manage to get a row done on my Maleficent socks, which is uh, the same sock pattern in the Oink Pigment uh, Oink sock in the Listen Humans colorway. And I'm working on those on the Addy Flexi Tip Needles, which I only have a, uh, I have the 10 row cuff and about five rows of like the body part done. So I haven't had a ton of time to practice on them, but they're they're taking some getting used to and I can't just pick them up and whip out a couple rows while I'm sitting without thinking about it at the moment. So they haven't gotten as much attention as possibly some of the other, other pick up and go, the other socks and the sock head hat. Okay, let's see. Off the needles. I have finished My Mama Vertebrae by Kelly Van Nurick, who I think I've screwed up her name every single time. I'm sorry. But yay, I finished your sweater. So I did that in uh, Knitted Wit in their Victory Sock Base in the Rainier colorway. I finished it this morning, so it is also uh, blocking at the moment. I'm really excited to wear it. My work just moved into a new location and it now has central air, so the AC is on all the time, all the time. And I am freezing because most everybody runs uh, warmer than I do. So I'm just really cold, so I'm excited to have a short sleeve sweater that I could potentially work in. I may actually make another one in a like a darker gray so it doesn't show oil quite as uh, badly. I don't wanna, you know, it's such a beautiful color that I don't want to ruin my Rainier colorway, which is in all these greens and blues with a little bit of purple and red and some white in there and it's just it's gorgeous i'm really i'm excited i think it's going to be a good three squeeze three season type sweater so i'm excited to get that to get that off the blocking board and the ends woven and then yeah then i will post pictures of it on the Instagram and I would tell you that I would like make a project page and do all that, but let's be real. Okay, um, moving on, spinning, spinning. I have still, I've, Tour de Fleece has been over for like two and a half weeks and I'm still spinning things, yay! Uh, I did a lot of spinning last week. I was working at a theater camp. We were doing a production of The Little Engine That Could with 
kids in the age range from three to 10, so it was quite the range, but usually at these day camps, we go to the park for about, well, we spend about with the little guys. It takes us about 10 minutes to walk down to the park and 10 minutes to walk back. And then we spend about half hour, maybe 40 minutes there if it's really holding their attention and we don't have we're not pressed to get other stuff done when we get back. So usually we spend more time at the park at the beginning of the week than at the end of the week when we're right up against a performance. But I took my new Turtle Made Drop Spindle down to the park with me and I was working on my uh, Kramer Yarns in their uh, Chunky Roving that they sent me to review in the bright pink, the purple, and the teal and I was just drop spindling while at the park and it was pretty awesome because all the kids were like, what are you doing, what are you doing? I'm gonna make spinners out of them yet. I'm gonna get them, it's gonna be awesome. Yay, that is how I will take over the world. It's a good plan, I think. But yeah, I have yet to start uh, applying a lot of the stuff I did for Torta Fleece. Uh, yeah, it's mainly been a time thing. This summer has been crazy. I'm kind of excited for school to start and September to get here and everything to kind of huh, mellow out. Okay, let's see on to our next segment. Netflix and knit. I went and saw Christopher Robin. We went to the drive-in and we saw Christopher Robin, which is the new movie uh, about Winnie the Pooh. And Christopher Robin is played by Ewan McGregor and he's all grown up and his priorities are all wonky and he's struggling with, with finding his inner child. And spoiler alert, but at the end he finds his inner child and it's absolutely adorable. I highly recommend it. Not a lot of like scary, intense conflict. If uh, some of those other more intense movies freak your kids out, like it's just, it's, it's really sweet. I mean, you know, there has to be some conflict, but it's not like a bad guy, scary sort of situation, you know? So that one I, I thought was very nice. It did not make me cry but it did make a coworker cry. And my sister Cameron has been crying at the trailers for months, but she has a very special connection to Winnie the Pooh. So, you know, there's, there's that for you. Um, I also saw the other night, Life of the Party, starring Melissa McCarthy, who is Suki on Gilmore Girls. This is not a family friendly movie. It is, it's a dumb, dumb comedy. There's a little bit of raunch, but there was no nudity and no extreme swearing as far as I can recall that some of them are real filthy. And this one I think was, you know, definitely on the, the cleaner end. Um, yeah, but it was just an enjoyable, silly, kind of dumb, Dumb comedy, and they didn't use a uh, vomit as a plot point, which is something that uh, we don't like. It's gross. So we always enjoy movies that don't use vomit specifically as a plot device. Uh, oh, and then I've been watching Making It with Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman, and their first three episodes are up on Hulu. I'm totally caught up. And I really, really like it. It's so much fun. It's just, it's so nice. It's, um, so the point is, is that they have all these people who specialize in different areas of crafting and they have different challenges. And then, you know, the winner gets like this cool patch to put on their apron at, uh, after they've won the challenge. And then of course somebody goes home cause it's an elimination, you know, competition sort of uh, reality show, but it's so much fun. Everybody is so nice. And the challenges have been really cool. In this last episode, they had to make like a sports stadium out of snack food 
which was really cool. And uh, the episode before, their big challenge was they had to make forts and a toy that goes with it. And they used all these different materials. And it's so much fun just to watch people build cool things and then to watch them step out of their comfort zone and build stuff that isn't necessarily in their crafty wheelhouse. There's a craft blogger on there who specializes in uh, smaller projects and paper projects specifically. And she put together this whole like circus fort thing and is really trying new materials and it's really cool. So I've, uh, I'm really enjoying it and it's led to some cool conversations. At dinner the other night we were discussing what fort we would make and what toys we would make to go with it and what those challenges would look like to reflect our personalities as opposed to, you know, they all make their projects to reflect their hometown and their upbringing or, you know, what their children and nieces and nephews are into and all those sorts of things. So that has been really fun to come home and watch and it's just it's it's easy it's not super taxing in a world that's kind of crappy right now so and it's just happy you know we don't always want to watch some intense drama not that any of the things i have netflixed and knitted to recently has been a super intense drama although i take that back now that I am sitting here and thinking about it, we did watch the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman film the other night, which for whatever reason my parents showed me when I was like four, which probably wasn't their best move. Um, I'm pretty sure it gave me nightmares. So good job, mom. And yeah, but I really hadn't seen it sense it was very interesting some of these movies I don't really know why they call them Batman because they're really about the Joker um this particular Batman movie all about the Jack Nicholson Joker really is what it's about they should just call the movie the Joker but it also kind of has this like very specific late 80s look to it which was fun to watch and it didn't give me nightmares this time around. So that was really cool. Also, yeah, there's some, some good stuff floating around. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that is it for anything new that I have watched that I haven't already talked to you guys about. I have been watching a lot of Gilmore Girls, a lot of How I Met Your Mother, uh, just kind of on in the background when I'm not focusing on anything in particular. Okay, moving on to craftivism. My big act of craftivism since I talked to you last was I voted. I voted in the Washington State primary. The ballot was due August 7th. Uh, there wasn't a ton. It wasn't like a huge ballot. It maybe took 15-20 minutes of my time to sit down and there were some candidates that I already, you know, knew that I was going to vote for and stuff. But some of the smaller, more local things, I definitely took the time with my voter pamphlet and read through and made what I thought was the best decision. And I encourage everybody to absolutely do the same to think through not just at the big national level, but at the smaller local level, because it does it does all matter. Um, and vote, 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 vote. We have the midterm elections coming up in November here in the US and it is just super important that we, we get out and we vote. Uh, if you are not registered to vote or you are unsure, I will link to how to register to vote in the show notes. Um, yeah, it's really important. So go forth and do that. Um, another thing is I have been, I have spent my summer interning at the Oasis Youth Center, which is a community outreach 
Center for LGBTQ Youth uh, in the age ranges of 11 to 24. And they really focus on giving these youth, creating leadership opportunities and building community. And uh, after seeing me knit a couple times uh, during their drop-in, one of the youth suggested we do a knitting club starting in the fall where everybody can knit hats and scarves and things for uh, the homeless in our community. So we're, we're building community and helping out our community and I am going to be the adult volunteer for that. So I'm really, really excited. However, they do have a fairly small budget. So if you have some old circular needles or double pointed needles that you no longer use or like, maybe you got a bunch of clover bamboo circular needles, uh, you know, like 16 inch good hat size uh, needles at the beginning of your knitting and now you've upgraded to fancy needles and just don't wanna house them anymore, particularly in size seven, eights and nines, which are great for hats and stuff um, and want to are looking for a good cause to donate them I will happily take them off your hands I will also take you know yarn and all of those things if that is something you have and would like to donate go ahead and private message me either on Instagram backstage knitting podcast or on Ravelry I am bizzle 87 and yeah I would love to take any of those supplies off of your hands. Also, speaking of craftivists and getting getting together and all of that, I am hosting the first crafter craft I'm calling it a craftivist afternoon. So or if you are in the Puget Sound area, Sunday, October 7th. I know it's a little ways out, but I like to get things on people's calendars. And I guess I'm booked like every Sunday in September already. So that's that's where we've landed. Uh, at, from 2 to 4 p.m., we're gonna get together and we're just gonna hang out and work on projects that are specifically going to either make a statement or to um, help help somebody else. That's really important. I'm going to be focusing on knitted knockers because it is October and that is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So that is what I plan on working on. But if you are working on hats or whatever for your local homeless shelter, or if you are working on a welcome blanket for refugees, anything, anything, if you need help with stuff, uh, yeah, so I will let everybody know once I have nailed down a good central-ish location. If you are in uh, my neck of the woods and have a good place recommendation as far as a, um, like a good Starbucks with a big table or something like that, I would like it to be an all-ages location um, with low low cost so you know can't I don't want people to have to buy a $50 dinner or anything like that uh yeah so I'm really looking forward to that and hopefully most of you some of you will be able to come out and knit something nice for for a good cause uh yeah let's see book club I okay so I'm I have not actually read all of the Harry Potter books. When I was younger and they had first come out, I zoomed through the first three, and then I got a hold of Goblet of Fire and read through like the first 10 or 11 chapters, and then I just got distracted and never picked it back up again. So two years ago, I finally listened to the audiobook all the way through of Goblet of Fire, and then I, you know, jumped into the audiobook of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And that was a struggle. For years, everybody has always said that it's their least favorite book and Harry is so whiny and blah, 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 blah. But it's my favorite of the Harry Potter movies. So I was like, really, guys, is it that bad? Yeah, it is that bad. 
Harry Potter is kind of a whiny little twit in that book. He is. But that wasn't really my problem. I think a lot of it came from where I was where I was in the book listening to it in correspondence to where we were politically in our country because I was listening to it right after the election, the 2016 election, and some of the similarities in some of those situations was just more than I could handle. So I have since moved past it. I have finished Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and I promptly started Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I have not started it on the audiobook version yet, but I have started, you know, I'm a few pages in to the actual book book, and I will probably continue to jump back and forth between the two as um, scheduling and my life allows it. So I'm really, really excited that hopefully I will be able to actually finish, finish the Harry Potter series and, and yeah. Um, let's see. Events. There are all sorts of events going on. I love, I love events. They're my favorite part. So September 5th, 2018. I am teaching a class on the history of knitting slash knitting during wartime. I am doing that with the Seattle Knitters Guild. It's one of their mini classes and I have linked to their website so you can figure out. I don't know who it's open to or what the deal is with that, but I've linked to the website so we can figure it out. Mm, excuse me. September 7th through 9th, 2018, I will be at Rose City Comic Con with my sisters. We're super excited. We're doing a photo op with Catherine Tate, who played Donna on Doctor Who. Collecting my Doctor Who pictures. I'm very excited about that. Um, I don't know what our cosplay plans are are at the moment we tend to go back and forth and fight about it a lot but the harry potter hats are part of our plan yay the pacific northwest yarn crawl is september 28th through 30th i will be crawling with my uh my mom and my sisters on that sunday the 30th Super excited about that. I love a good yarn crawl Sunday. And if you are in the area, you should try to hit a couple of those stores because they're, they're super awesome. And let's see. And then the last thing, which I already talked about, was the Craftivist Afternoon, Sunday, October 7th from 2 to 4 p.m. And I will get you guys that location as soon as I have one. Whew. It's a lot. It's a lot, guys. Okay. So, I think that is everything I have for you today. I want to thank you all so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Again, if you want to see what I am up to, uh, like, friend, follow Backstage Knitting Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope. You can find the show notes where I have linked to all of these things at backstageknitting.com. You can email me questions, comments, concerns, or other stuff at backstageknitting at gmail.com. Please join our Ravelry group. It has lovely people and you should be one of them. And subscribe to the audio and video at either Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. And I think that is everything. So please have a great rest of your summer. Stay safe. Stay cool. Keep breathing. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.